right, gang, shall we uh, start up? Uh, welcome, everyone. This is the Board of Northampton Board of Public Works. It's September 24th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business this evening will be the minutes of the August 20th. Oh, public comment. Yeah. We'd like to open the floor to members of the public who have something they'd like to talk to. I've been away for a couple of months here, but I'd like to, uh, it was mentioned today of capital expenditures. And I'd like to bring your attention to the new riding arena at the fairgrounds. It's a metal structure frame. It's got a canvas roof on it. And I was talking to the guys putting it together, and it's an $18 per square foot operation. It seems an awful lot cheaper for covering utility vehicles than the $100 or $200 a square foot that's in the plan and the file someplace that may or may not ever be built. So the guy says that it could be covered with uh, metal. It could have metal siding on it instead of the canvas. The canvas has a 15-year guarantee. And uh, if you want to get your vehicles out of the rain, it seems like a rather economical way to do it instead of going concrete. This place proves that. This is the DPW. I know. <laughs> We're all about concrete. <laughs> anyway, that's my money saving offer for you. Thank you. Um, Justin, you want to wait till I, you can talk when, yeah. when we get to your. That makes more sense. Okay. I have nothing else to say. Anything you'd like to say now? Or? Me? Yes. Me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my Kirby, I'm sorry. Uh, look, I want to thank you in advance for beefing up the speed bump. I understand, according to my state counselor, that you guys are going to be busy tomorrow on North Street because we had this wimpy speed bump that wouldn't, doesn't slow down anybody down. So, okay. okay. Thank you for that work. Thank you for your concern. Say good night. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming good in. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. Uh, First, for your consideration, the minutes of the August 20th DPW meeting. Um, can I just interrupt for a moment? I think this is Pat's first meeting. Yes? It is. Oh, I'm sorry. Should we um, welcome our new We member? should recognize him on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pat, want to take a second and tell us about yourself? Okay. Well, um, let's see. Uh, I thank you for the welcome. I'm uh, looking forward to this. I, this will be my second time around on the... Uh, Board of Public Works, having spent, uh, I think, 10 years or so mm -hmm. back in the late 70s uh, until the mid-80s. I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, that was with uh, Pat Ryan uh, when he was still city engineer. And then after he passed away during the period of time that I was on the board, uh, of course, with Peter McNulty and uh, and George Andikides, uh, who was working uh, as an uh, assistant city engineer at the time. So it was uh, for me. It was a it was a chance to really get to know the community in a way that that uh, has had uh, great benefit for many many years, and appreciate the opportunity to do it again. And, uh, particularly impressed with the uh, with the uh, approach that the board took to the stormwater management and the public hearings, two of which I attended, and was uh, really pleased with the way that. Uh, your explanation and with all the supplemental information provided by the staff, I thought that the uh, I thought that the, many of the people walked in the door uh, with a chip on their shoulder or a, yeah. at least a series of significant and serious questions. And I think most that I in, interacted with left uh, considering themselves well informed and, and appreciative of what was what the department was facing. So. Uh, great job, Terry. And, uh, looking forward to this. So thank you. Well, we're looking forward to having you on the board. Great. Those minutes. <laughs> what do you think? They don't want to face them. <laughs> I move approval. Second. Any discussion or comments? BJ, have you heard from anyone? No. Everyone who is willing to accept them as uh, presented? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. abstain. Well. Two abstentions. <laughs> now, is this a typo? Do we have the no, hearing? Scanlon Avenue. Oh, the hearing. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. And again, any discussion about 
Scanlon Avenue hearing. No. All in favor of accepting those minutes as they're presented? Aye. 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 Yeah, I think David and I were dealing with it. I'm sorry, Molly. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was not present. I said that you and I were the only ones that Mike got mad at me. <laughs> oh, that's not mad. mad. That's not mad. You want to see mad? You want to see mad? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> All right, um, Bob Reckman and Martha Lyon are here to talk to us about the Bridge Street Cemetery. Make a motion that we take Bridge Street Cemetery out of order. Indeed, okay. that's great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. So, we have made wonderful progress on the Bridge Street Cemetery project. As many of you remember, I was here with some people from the Bridge Street, from the Ward 3 Neighbor Association in the spring, and we we're worried about the fence. We said, will you support us if we go forward? You said yes. And then we moved ahead. And as we did that, we realized that the cemetery has more than just a fence problem. I personally think the fence problem is the biggest single one, but there are many other issues that the, that the city needs to look at in terms of what should happen to that cemetery. So we thought, we need an expert. We need somebody who can tell us what our options are in these multiple dimensions and so we were lucky enough we were and jim and rich have been super helpful so jim and rich and i and my team from the war three association there are six other people who were part of our little cemetery committee uh, got together and found miss martha Lyon, the local <coughs> landscape architect and i just want to ramble on for a couple of minutes and let martha tell you about the proposal she's made but we need, let me step back. What we hope comes out of, what I hope comes out of tonight is that this board votes to write an even more effusive letter of support <laughs> to the CPC for the application that's currently pending to fund Ms. Lyon's research study and rec set of recommendations, which will be done by the end of 2015, roughly? Um, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah, anyway, so that's a year and a half year and a half project. So, Mark, you want to tell them what you proposed to the BPW, which is the basis of our application? Sure. Uh, so, but when Mark contacted me um, and Jim, we went out to the site and had a meeting out there, and um, I've been kind of watching this landscape for a long time, because um, in 2006 and 2007, my husband and I had to uh, live temporarily in North Street where our house was being renovated, and um, we took our dog for walks. Dr. Walks a lot, and uh, it was the first time I kind of experienced the cemetery, and it was, I thought it was, you know, kind of a shame that this really historic piece of Northampton, probably one of the oldest intact landscapes in the city, um, was sort of, not neglected, but it just felt a little run down. You know, the gravestones are falling down, the trees are looking very great, and then they had this hideous fence around it, which made it look kind of like a prison yard. So I actually wrote a letter to the editor of the Gazette, this is in 2007, just you know, suggesting that there might be an effort to um, apply for CPC money to do something about it. So anyway, that was a long preface to Bob getting in touch with me, and I was really happy to be contacted. Um, one, because I do a lot of work like this all around New England and New York State. I've worked in a I work on historic landscapes primarily, um, so cemeteries are one of the types of landscapes that I work on. And um, it's close to home, so that's kind of great, too. Uh, so what we discussed that day, and I think what we're putting forward in this application um, that we're having, have you, hoping you will endorse is um, a proposal to really look at the <coughs> cemetery holistically and do a long-range master plan for it. And what that will involve is um, mapping what's out there now, be creating a whole new map of the cemetery and, and mapping all of its existing features and um, researching its history so we can understand how it developed over time and we can make appropriate recommendations based on the different areas of the cemetery that look differently. Um, and the goal in the long term will be to come up with a series of recommendations with a rough budget attached to each in order of priority but then the city can go and try to work on little by little. So for example, if I mentioned the fence, that might be one project. There might be a project to start treating the gravestones. A lot of gravestones are damaged. And 
these gravestones, especially the old ones, are original works of art. There are no other others like that anywhere. They're, most of them are hand carved individually, so they need to be treated appropriately. So I'll be working um, with um, two colleagues, two professional colleagues. One is a gravestone conservator who will come in and look at all of the stones that are damaged and hazardous and uh, give an idea about what treatment will involve. And I will also have a structural engineer who works on historic structures with me to look at the, the structures in the cemetery, so the tomb, tombs. Um, both are people that I've worked with for years and years and years. They're very experienced and they know what they're doing. And then finally, um, we're hoping to engage Smith College students to work on this with us, with us to um, do a couple things. Um, one, it would be, it's going to be great if they can actually do the existing conditions and I think they have mapping capability. They can go out and you know, map the trees and identify them. Um, and also, it's possible that they'd be able to assist me with some of the historical research, too. So I'm working with um, Reed Bertone Johnson, who is a um, member of the faculty in the Landscape Studies program. And um, we're meeting actually next week to discuss the details of how they would get involved. And his students have done wonderful creative work already. Mm -hmm. Not the same students, but three or four years ago in Ward 3. So, um, you know, pending um, any, there might be holdups, we never know. This, usually these projects take about six months. Sometimes sooner, sometimes they go more quickly, and sometimes they're longer. One of the big um, hurdles is if we have a lot of snow in the winter, the gravestone uh, people can't really look at the stones because they need to uh, see what's going on around the foundations of them and the ground is frozen. That's kind of a summary. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Should we uh, let the Jim chime well, in? Let me just add one more thing. So what I hope will come of this is that in we're, we're not going to know about the grant until the end of the year. The money's not going to be available. So we can't even start. But once Martha's done her work, we're going to have a budget. And I don't know how much it's going to be, but it's going to have some, you know, some numbers for different projects. And I hope then you and the Ward 3 Neighbors Association can work another step to the CPA to actually fund some of this work. We, because, as you know from Pulaski Park, you get the design first, and that's what we're doing now. And then you got to get the, the funding, and the CPA is where we certainly look. And we hope, you know, Martha's going to, I think, give us a vision for how the cemetery could be improved. And I hope we're able to follow on and achieve all I just wanted to add that um, Rich Parsoletti, the street superintendent, and I had met with Bob a couple of times at the cemetery, and when, when Martha came out, we met with her and Reed, and it is very, very exciting um, to, to find out about the type of work that Martha can do for the city under the CPA grant. Um, when we met with the Ward 3 neighborhood, there's a lot of passion for the cemetery, and people are passionate in, in general about the cemetery, which is great, but more specifically, different people have different concerns about the cemetery and what needs to be done. And I think the concept of what Martha's gonna do in terms of the master plan and looking at the entire landscape and coming up with a plan that we can implement over time does a couple of things. It provides a vision for the future and it also is able to capture, it's a little disparate energy, I guess, to be is one way to put it, because there's a lot of people passionate about preparing the gravestones, more people are passionate about entryways and fencing and, and, and different things. So we've, we had a, some really great meetings out there and Rich Parcelletti is really excited. And what's interesting, oh Rich, I'll go on just for a second because you asked me. Um, <laughs> Rich knows a lot about the cemetery. And every time we went out there and we had another meeting with Bob and we met with Martha, he knows an awful lot about the cemetery history. And um, what I found out more, people started to come into my office from Ward 3, I mean, Bob was just one of them, but other people would come into my office with their own ideas and passion about the cemetery, and these are great things. I, mean, I just think it's so fantastic that people are so energetic about it and behind the work that um, is gonna be done. And um, the grant application was for $36,900, and I think, I, I feel good. I, I know there's a lot of competition with CPA money this year, but um, it's a great, great project. 
Uh, I just wanted to add, uh, I think cemeteries are undervalued as open space, urban open space. And there are those in our group who would share your opinion. And, and the other <coughs> thing that I find very ironic is our cemetery, Bridge Street Cemetery, is a tourist destination because John Penn Edwards is buried there. And I'm affiliated with the First Church, and they come to the bus to look at the church, and then they want to go find out where he's buried. And so, you know, this is, it has so many positive things that we should be making. We should be presenting our best faces up there and making sure that it's a wonderful landscape and serves the community well on all the time. Um, I second all the comments that you made. Um, the land for 36900 was that for planning purposes and that's what's already been granted? No, we're, that's what we're applying, that's for, applying for. And that's what we need you guys to say. More thumbs up for this now that you know much more about the specific things we're asking the CPA for. You said in the spring you'd support our application, right, but right. I'm looking, hoping to get unanimous vote. And for all 36,000. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a recommendation to the CPA. Okay. okay. Is it the DPW that issues the contract for this work, it if we be, get it? Yeah. Would be, yeah. And are we faced with procurement issues, or can mm -hmm. we work? Automatically with Martha. Well, we can work with Martha. Okay. okay. Yeah. I asked that question too. If it were construction, if it were construction, it mm -hmm. could be procurement. Sure. It's design. Yeah. Okay. So. so, let's see, we don't, well, I bet we don't need a vote, but we basically, is it the consensus of the board that we ask the mm -hmm. staff? To write a really enthusiastic letter, or, or do you happen to have one all written? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> 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 that would actually help. <laughs> Jim can write one. Um, passionate. Pardon? Passionate. Passionate. And this would be the for the fall. Um, uh, this is the current funding round. The current. The application has been submitted. And there's nothing for Pulaski Park in this current round. That's correct. That's not correct. No, there, I'm sorry. There is something for Pulaski Park in this round. <laughs> May we hear about that? It's later on the agenda. Would you like to move it up? I, I move that we move it up. I asked a question just before. In terms of the CPA um, funding, uh, the, the 36 9, is it, it, I've only been to one of those um, public discussions, and I, it would seem to be to be much more effective. Um, it would be wonderful to have a strong letter of support, of course, but equally as, uh, as important, I think, to be there to present that letter of support um, because they have a way of, uh, at least in my observation, uh, there's, there's uh, you know, the squeaky wheel, I think, is uh, something that does come into play with that a little bit. And I think that might be a way of even adding, you know, uh, to the obvious support that the letter will express. It seems to me, I think it would be something that if we could follow it closely enough so that you could see when that agenda is presenting those items and, and be there or have some representative of the sure. of the board or the department there to, to support. I think sure. it, it just, my observation is that that has been effective for others. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So do we have any conflict of interest um, as a board? Do we have the Pulaski Park project, which we're working on? Um, I mean, they're different projects. I don't look at them as necessarily comp competing or, or anything. It's really up to the, the CPA committee to determine what gets funded or not, what doesn't get funded. But we submitted an application from Pulaski Park for construction money for $1.5 million. Um, and I was going to talk about that a little bit further, but basically we have submitted uh, a state grant application for, I think it was about 400000 And if we get that money, we need to have a local source of funding in order to move to construction. So the time was now in the fall to get into the CPA process to see if we could get um, the money we need in order to be able to spend the, the state grant money should we get it. So that was the, that was the thinking there. The design actually isn't done, which you would know, right? We haven't. We haven't presented any designs, drafts, or anything to the board. So the design's not done, and we have um, you know, we have preliminary cost estimates as to what the project will cost, and we've had internal meetings 
um, with the Office of Planning and Sustainability and um, the Mayor's Office and others about um, sort of the, the nature and the scope of the project and moving forward for, con for construction money now, basically for the purposes of being able to start construction with the state grant if we can. Uh, so that's sort of a, an overview of that one. Jim, if we didn't get the state grant, then the 1.5 million wouldn't be sufficient. It wouldn't be. Is the state grant contingent on a, at least a similar amount of local funding? Or? Um, it's contingent on local match, and I don't know where the money necessarily would come from. In order to submit the grant to the state, um, the city submitted a letter basically with city council um, concurrence that local sources of funding would be found for the project in order to take the grant if, if we got the grant. So there was sort of one, that sort of um, support letter, if you will, from the council that was a requirement of applying to the state line. State so was that a guarantee or um, or just saying that, that they would I mean, in other words, if CPA does not follow up with a matching $400,000, for instance, then the city is saying that they would find that, that $400,000 to match the state amount, which that's not even addressing the sufficiency, but... I think there's a general commitment there that the city will find the money to do the project if we get the, if we get the state money. I think that's what basically that says. Otherwise, you're not going to take the state money if you don't have the money to do the project. Mm -hmm. Sort of that, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing that the the um, Pulaski Park grant application um, in the budget requested is indicative of is what we've indicated in here that um, the project is going to be broken up into a couple of phases, and we're going to apply for another four hundred thousand dollars in state funding in the next state grant round. So we're planning on the project funding at the moment is based on the assumption that about $800,000 in state grant money would become available for this project and that the balance of about 1.5 would come from local sources, of which we applied to the CPA for that 1.5 in the fall right now. Isn't that um, standard support letter, isn't that support letter somewhat of a standard letter mm -hmm. of submission within the mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I don't think we got to get hung up on the fact that it's Consider just if you're going to apply for a grant, you've got to have the letter. The letter you have to have it right. to submit for this type of grant from the yeah. state. Florence Fields and Wayne Wayne Biden's office has, has submitted successfully the but the boathouse project. He's been very successful at it. In this letter, I didn't have to draft up the language for it because mm -hmm. that letter had been approved yeah. by the council many times. Yeah. And the 1.5 is Stimson's um, estimate for the total cost. Of the park? No, the total cost is about 2.3. Okay. 800,000 of that is state grant money. We're assuming that we would would be available or awarded, and then the total CPA request is 1.5. So obviously, you know, to me, it's a little different than enterprise fund projects that we do. We know we have the money, we set up the budget, and then the project rolls. This one's a little different because all funding sources, because their grant style or you know, you don't really know what you have until you have it, right? And then if you don't get some of it, then you need to reassess either your schedule or where the money is going to come from. Um, so this is the first direction for funding for this project, which is a heavy reliance on state grant, heavy reliance on CPA grant to make it happen. Um, the, the Bridge Street Cemetery project, because I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, at 36900 is a, it's a relatively small request, I think, for that committee. Yeah, it's a much yeah. different scale. So, everyone comfortable if we circle back to the mm -hmm. cemetery? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, is there a consensus we would like a really positive letter? Lots of enthusiasm? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, exclamation points? A lot of exclamation points. Underlying. Emoticons? Smiley faces. <laughs> the works. <laughs> works. Um, all right, I, th I think. We appreciate That's your thank support. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. And we'll be forward forwarding that to the CTA committee. <coughs> and, and and if you take past recommendation, yeah, we'll one member of this board might we'll appear on October the fifteenth when we're going to appear before the CPA. So somebody from this board 
could speak to write to the committee on our behalf. And, and do you think we could speak on two issues at the same time? No, 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 only on ours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for coming in. Harry, can I make a comment on the cemetery issue? Sure. I would just recommend Jeez. that. Oh, my name is Jasper Lucky Um You're right, I haven't heard <coughs> before. But uh, I would just recommend that you don't put up a fence when you're done. Uh, I think public space, in general, and the same is true of Sheldon Field, is more inviting, more attractive without a fence. And there are many public properties in Northampton that don't have a fence. And I think that the number of lawsuits from people tripping has been relatively few um, and is not likely to bear a huge burden on the city. So Jasper is here to talk to us about the uh, our policy for obstructed sidewalks. I make a motion to take that out of order. Great. Uh, Ned, Ned has proposed some language. I, I, in your package tonight, there's actually two different pieces of paper. One is the email about, uh, one was my original proposal to say, looking at trying to define public way obstructions. There's basically five votes there with different kinds of interpretations of uh, unpermitted public way obstructions, permitted public way obstruction, public way obstruction, and defining a public way. And that's not in the package, I don't think. What, didn't you, didn't you get that last couple months ago when we were just starting to talk about it? No. Probably, no. Okay, then I didn't. Do you guys, do you guys it was sent out. It was sent out. Oh, I know. sent it yesterday. I, yeah, I think you got. Yeah, yeah. I, got the, I got the. I'll make copies. Yeah. Of the well, that's a different policy. No, I got the sidewalk. Yeah, I sent it at the end of the day yesterday. Remember? No. So, if you excuse me, I'll make a bunch of copies. Didn't I? Sure. Yeah. No. Are you, I, I do you want to take thought, something yes. outside of order for the moment? We don't have I, I might have yeah. thought it was Jim's first contact. The same one. Yeah. New business number one I can do. All right, let's go with that. The, so uh, next for our consideration of contract for engineering services to the mount, for the Mountain Street Reservoir Low Lift Pump Station Generator to Garcia, Galuska, and Danusa in the amount of $49,815. This will be paid for out of a water enterprise fund. It will be. This would be if it were approved. So we have, true, we have uh, money in the in the budget in the water enterprise fund to uh, install a emergency generator at the low lift pump station at Mount Street Reservoir. Um, we issued a uh, request for qualifications um, for firms to submit uh, on design uh, and permitting of the pump station of the pump station generator. We received three. Uh, qualifications packages from Garcia Galuska de Souza, from Dubois and King, and from the Hill Engineers. Uh, we reviewed those. Uh, staff reviewed the qualification submittals that were made uh, based on our review of the information in comparison to the criteria that we established. We felt that Garcia Galuska and de Souza was the most qualified firm to do this work for us. Um, under the Chapter 149 procurement bidding laws, we pick based on qualifications and then we move to negotiation for the fee. We had advertised um, in the central register that the fee could not exceed $60,000 for this work. And when we uh, entered into negotiations with Garcia, Galuska, and D'Souza, they had submitted a proposal for $49,815, which we reviewed and were, um, we were satisfied with their proposal. So we've, we've got the contract here for the board. At the um, Mount Sioux Reservoir is, of course, below the water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. And the backup generator for the main plant isn't doesn't have enough capacity to also operate the pump to withdraw water from the lower reservoir mm -hmm. into the station. So, um, so this is to supplement that from the lower reservoir up. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Oh, so when the way you presented it made it sound like you didn't negotiate, a, you didn't set a fee until after you had chosen your, uh, out of the three people that submitted, or did they all submit fee estimates? They didn't submit fees. We can't ask for fee for Chapter 149. It's a building related project. Mm -hmm. So the process by state law is qualifications, and then we pick someone based on qualifications, and then we negotiate the fee. 
in the advertisement in this particular case, we had determined that the maximum fee for the project would be $60,000, so it's 15% of the, of the constr estimated construction cost. Um, so we were, we were pleased with um, what their proposal was. We thought it was pretty fair and reasonable, and the firm has a lot of experience um, with emergency generators and that sort of thing, working with municipalities and mass. So we, we, we haven't worked with this firm before, but um, you know, they seem like they're highly qualified for it. Okay. Thank you. I haven't had a chance to review this yet, um, and I was wondering if we could put it off to the next meeting sure. so I could take a look at it. Sure. If that's okay with the rest of the group. Okay. Yes, so can I just ask another question because of the new guy? Uh, no, question. ask lots of questions. Okay. So, the, um, this is uh, generated that was not part of the original, um, there was a reason that, that was not part of the original uh, improvements that, that, that uh, the original construction? Construction. Why, well, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm understanding, given the, the, the fact that a generator is a fairly standard thing, it would seem to me to be the need of with, with respect to a, a pump, why was that not part of the? I think I, well, there's, there's a couple parts to that. <clears throat> the first part was that there is a generator the water treatment plant that can run the entire facility there. Mm -hmm. We found out during the Hurricane Irene, the hydrovidity in the reservoir, um, the Rhine Reservoir, we couldn't draw water from there, and we were looking to draw from Mountain Street, and um, that didn't have a backup power supply. We realized that we might have to rely on Mountain Street in the future. During another event like this, we needed a backup power supply there also. It may have been cut as an original cost cutting measure as part of the original job because I think the theory is that the water that comes from the Ryan Reservoir flows by gravity, so you don't need to be you don't why you do you have to about, right. why do you have right. to worry about a pump station at Mountain right. Street if you've right. got a gravity yeah. source? But as Ned just indicated during Irene, that's when we realized that having redundancy and our ability to draw from the reservoirs is pretty critical. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why we were moving ahead with this mm -hmm. sort of project. Um, your hamstrung, it's, you know, when the weather's bad, you know, yeah. you, you don't have power and that's when you need it. Yeah. So we're going to table this uh, until the next meeting. Sure. That's fine. And I'll, I'll email, I apologize for not sending that around, but oversight on my part, and we'll, we'll get it around people. And thank you for being here. <laughs> um, all right, so now we are back to obstructed sidewalks, I believe. So now you have the information in hand, and I don't know if you want to delay it for, for the next meeting because you haven't read any of this yet. But basically, I tried to start off by looking at all the obstacles and obstructions we have in the city sidewalk that are downtown, such as benches, trash receptacles, parking meters, telephone poles, all these things that when Jasper came in, he had talked about free, un, un, free use of the sidewalks in its entirety, which cannot happen downtown. So I was trying to build some language that allows for permanent obstructions, unpermanent ones that are basically utility poles and other uh, you know, benches, things of that nature. And Terry came back and said, no, why don't we just keep it really simple? Why don't we look at this one, which is just amending the existing ones to say anything less than three feet in width and under seven feet in height because those are the kind of instructions that we actually look for now or find and we ask people to trim back predominantly bushes is what it is. So there's kind of two ends of the spectrum. I'm not sure what the board wants to do or the good committee wants to do, but um, looking around on the internet and finding what other communities are doing, it, there's, there's a full range of how we want to do this. But I thought the language of having permanent instructions and unpermanent ones were, were to be noted. That was my thought. I like the simplified approach, and I don't know if we have to run it by Alan. Um, and everything I have to go through Alan for ordinance change, yes. So that would protect it. So I, I endorse in general the concept of trying to keep things simple so that everyone understands what we're trying to do. I. We're aware of one community, and it might be Amherst, that doesn't allow any obstruction. And maybe it's any private obstruction of a sidewalk. I think that came up during some discussion. Um, whether or not that, that particular fact is correct, it, by 
going to three feet, we're condoning any any other obstruction of the sidewalk, any shrub that comes out. So if we have a five foot sh sidewalk, we're condoning two feet being blocked. And it just doesn't sound right to me, you know. So I understand there's a practical aspect of this, you know. We're, if, if somebody's two inches into a sidewalk, we're not going to send them a letter and say, please trim your hedge. But, but when it's written policy, I don't, it just doesn't ring true with me that we should be condoning everything up to three feet. I had suggested in conjunction with this that we'd say uh, it shouldn't be obstructed such that more than 90% of the sidewalk is unusable. But in no event should it be less than three feet. That's kind of what I was. Terry, hmm. man. Um, currently. So Jas Jasper brought this issue to the board a couple months ago. To the joint committee. Yes. Okay. Correct. Board of Public Works, City Council, Conference Committee is where yes. I originally brought it at uh, Councilor Adams' suggestion, as opposed to MJ Adams. Um, just to that point, I wanted to say that the way that it's structured right now, the Board of Public Works uh, does not independently um, cite property owners for violations. A complaint is required. Um, so guarding against excessive citations isn't necessary because no member of the public would complain about something that wasn't bothering them except in very extreme circumstances. Um, and so it's probably much more useful to have a policy that is errors on the side of sidewalks as opposed to one that does that errors on the side of obstruction. And do you want, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just I, like I said, I would, I brought a copy of my report from June. You can just have, it has, it has an explanation and then um, the three pages are double sided because I ran out of paper. Um, as far as just the list of what the obstructions were then, and some of them may have been removed since then. Ja I know Jasper, I, I can see you, you must, but you have an electronic version of this also? Yes, I do. I could send it to you in an email. I wonder, sent to BJ and make it be part of the record? Um, I don't have BJ's email address, but I suppose I could look it up. No, we'll give it to Okay, yeah, I can do that. For sure. So we'll, we'll keep this, but if, it's, if we have it, the electronic version, then yeah. it could be part of the record on this one. I will do that, okay. uh, hopefully within a couple of days. Aren't those zoning regulations, don't they address things like hedges and trees uh, as they obstruct? Uh, uh, site distances site for intersecting side streets. Yeah. That's in zoning. Yes. Heights of fences are in zoning, things right. of that nature. I mean, it's, this is, to me, it's something similar to that. I can see, uh, well, actually, it addresses road edges. Yeah. Or it mentions it. Or to the edge of road pavement or shoulder where, where a sidewalk does not exist, including any obstruction in the form of a tree, bush, or the vegetation mm -hmm. that protrudes over said sidewalk or edge of road pavement or shoulder. So that, that's, that part's really. It covered. covers the right of way, yeah. is what it does. Yeah. In zoning, it gets into a little more detail where they talk about plants uh, no higher than three feet in height in the green belt, things of that nature, too. That's in zoning. Right. Yeah. Can I ask a question that. Um, just, just so as a frame of reference, as you, as I'm traveling along Prospect Street from uh, the Smith College area up towards the Y, the Prospect, uh, uh, Prospect Street, um, and you're at the lower end of it. There's a public park down near Trumbull Road. If you can kind of envision what I'm talking about, and you go down, you're you're heading up Prospect Street, uh, which would be in a westerly direction, I believe. You come to the corner of Summer Street. At the top of Summer Street would be the Magna House. Um, you've got a, a tree that is uh, that obstructs the view in, in line of sight as you take as you look up left towards towards Magna House coming down down the hill to see what cars might be coming down the hill because there's a stop sign there. Is this an example of what we're talking about in terms of the the um, the ability to control that kind of 
of encroachment on the right of way? Jasper um, took some time to walk around. I think it was Ward 3. No, I did. Um, I had a map last time, but I wasn't able to reproduce the map because it was hand drawn. Councilor Specter has it uh, with, with the Conference Committee. But basically, I surveyed enough of the streets that I think I got between 85 and 90 percent of the sidewalks because a lot of streets in Leeds and so forth don't have sidewalks. Um, and I, I have no idea what the actual percentage is. And, and am I correct? Your, your focus was pedestrian access, the ability to walk down the sidewalk. Correct. More and so I, than driving side, side lines for drivers. Yeah. Right, because I think that the city is generally better about keeping that up on that end. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't so worried about it. But it is a concern. Yeah, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of what the regulation is, what the article states presently. And so my question basically is, how does how, do, how is that normally addressed? When, when something like that occurs, uh, whether we're talking about coming up with a policy for, for how it might be, how obstructions might be handled in the future, where, the where, where a problem like that presently exists, is it up to the Board of Public Works to, uh, to uh, control what those obstructions might be and, and take action to correct them? Or is it something that has to be done? Um, is there other notice that's given in another form from another city department to address such a problem? So if a complaint comes into this department that there's an obstruction, we'll send an engineer to go out and look at it, mm -hmm. um, see what the issue is, report back to me. Uh, we try to knock on the people's doors, saying, right. hey, by the way, we have this issue here, can you right. take care of it? So I think um, that's the last resort, we send out a certified letter that they basically they have a 14-day remedy and cure period, uh, whereas care. we come in and take care of it and mm -hmm. we'll charge you. All right. Okay. Well, that's important for me to understand because this is, uh, I, I understand the specifics of what's being asked in terms of the kind of obstructions that, that uh, is the question of which is being raised today. But uh, I just was trying to get it in the general context as to what this presently means mm -hmm. and how it's, mm -hmm. how it is dealt with under the circumstances that exist. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. So, Mike, you would like, you're making the case for uh, a little more detail in this. Yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued by your proposal, the 90% proposal. Do people like a chance to think about it and maybe talk about it? Uh, stuff? I maybe think so, know? yeah. Sure. Why not? May I remind you that um, you had stated that you would be able to complete the policy review by September. Um, I see and that. You, you said that I, in the August it, it. meeting, and very specifically, the reason why that that's a good thing is because... You're thinking trick-or-treat Halloween. No. I'm thinking before the snow sets in, I would like to be able to make some complaints and have them dealt with. But I would like to do that after the process is completed, so that I'm not fighting on two fronts and, and uh, making a mess of it. Specifically to the policy, though, I think 90% is good. I think you have to find a way to um, make an exception for very large trees. that have. There are some places where trees have just completely covered the sidewalk, and we don't want to cut down 200-year-old trees. Um, How about 300? Yes, those are dangerous. Yeah, they're gone. Okay, <laughs> but not for the sake of having a sidewalk. That, that becomes a, a somewhat different issue. Um, Tricky to write that down, but I know, I know what you're saying. Correct. I also think that there's less likely to be complaints about that. I also think that in addition to firming up the policy of what uh, cannot be done, I also think that the window of compliance should be extended to 30 days because most obstructions are plants. Plants grow during the summer. That's when people are on vacation. And they should be allowed to come back and then get the letter. From 14 to 30 is interesting. Correct. In addition to um, making the policy more strict, I think that uh, compliance time should be more lean. So we can work on this. You, I don't think we're going to make the September deadline, but perhaps you could email around uh, so, sure. some adjustments, yeah. and then we, everyone have a chance to look at it and maybe send back comment. Have to send I, it back to Ned. I bet we can. Isn't that deliberation? No, we send just send our comments back to oh, Ned. Maybe keep it a secret. Yeah. 
We won't know each other. So. We'll be a secret right. Santa sort of a deal. Gotcha. Gotcha. I can do that. What's the public meeting law that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was uh, worried about. Yes. Yeah. Since you left back in the 80s, yeah, 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 it's really yeah, tight. No, I'm, no, it was difficult with the council. Oh. Luckily, we're able to yeah. at least even talk to you. Yeah. So put this on the agenda for October 8th. That same reason? Mm -hmm. Next meeting. Okay. So that's, we're, all, we're almost there. Certainly well ahead of this now. Sure. So does, does that mean that a decision will be made on October 8th or that you will discuss it on October 8th? Because to me, those are two different things. Well, we didn't actually promise full on uh, approval, but I would wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that seems that's certainly the direction I hope we're headed. But, so, can you answer the question? Yes. This is a recommendation to change the ordinance. Let's go to city council for approval. Uh, so, right there is probably a two to three month issue of dealing with this. They refer it down to ordinance committee, mm -hmm. transportation parking commission. They might ask the board to review it again one final time. Not true, because the ordinance as currently written says that the Board of Public Works has the ability to define it. And so the reason that we're here, years. as opposed to still in the conference committee, is because that's already in the, in the existing law. You are the man, Jasper. Well, I'm, well I, I'm, not con I'm, not I'm not convinced of that. that. The case I'm not convinced of that. Now, I think we need to Adams find. thinks that the power should be taken away from the Board of Public Works, but it just seemed easier to move in, in this direction because Councillor Paul Spector, who chairs that committee, was not interested in doing it. I think the desire at the conference committee was, if, if I recall the discussion correctly, and that Councillor Adams felt that having the definition for the obstruction in the ordinance would be necessary because the problem with the ordinance as it stands is it discusses an obstruction that's not defined in the ordinance yeah. um, but you know again I'm not a, I'm not Alan Seawald. No he, he clearly he was looking for uh, some kind of a definition. Sure. Yeah. Well, along those lines I, I, I think before we finalize a recommendation we ought to take it back to that committee they were actively involved in it. We meet with them on the 20th. Of October. How about those, right? Turn committee? Because the 13th is a holiday. So Jasper, I don't think we can quite get to your deadline, but we'll, well keep so moving the, so forward. The, so the question is, what is the time frame we're looking at now? That's, that's what I'm, that's what the question was. Um, you're, you're planning to um, com complete the, the Board of Public Works this this board uh, will have their definition on the 8th. It will then be forwarded to the conference committee on the 20th. Or are we looking that at... Would be, that would be great. But that would be the best we could do. Yeah. Correct. What stands in the way of that happening? Disagreement. Yeah. If we get it out here and one or two people are... I'm sure and, okay. and persuade the group that you know this, this needs a little more work. I mean, it's just like any other deliberation. After the 8th, when is the next? Um, it's a, so approximately tw uh, 12, 14 days later, the conference committee will meet again. Yes. But is there a board meeting between the 8th and the 20th? No. 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Got it. But this is all good work. We appreciate it, and I think it's reasonable to uh, drill down into this a little bit and kind of clarify some of the issues. So I, 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 sure. I hope you don't feel that this is for naught. It's no, just I it don't, may I not don't, happen quite as quickly it, as you would No, I don't, I don't think that, and anyone who knows me think, would never think that I don't enjoy sitting through meetings like this. Um, sat through every minute of every city council meeting since January. So okay, good. I, I, I'm not a stranger to that, that and, and to process. I believe that this body had the capacity to review it prior to this meeting and opted not to do so, which I, I find to be um, di disappointing and maybe not necessarily the best practice. That said, um, 
the likelihood of it snowing in November in any significant amount is low, and so it's, it's possible that even if it's extended to 30 days, if it's decided in late October, then my goals will still be met for the year. So if that is a timeline that can actually work, then I think we're fine. Okay, great. So maybe we'll see you on the... I will, I will certainly make that effort, and hopefully Councillor Adams will too. He was unable to make it tonight. Can I just also say that if there's any of these obstructions that you've identified that are so onerous that you feel like you don't want to wait on them, there is a process in place now that you can call in and make a, a register a complaint to us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm again, just, I just want you to yeah, know that, that I, you're not 100% stalled as you seem to be presenting yourself to be, that there are some options for you available on the table right now. Yeah, as we work towards this a long term solution. I did I did my initial research in the spring and I opted not to make any complaints until the process was uh, completed because it it didn't seem to me to be productive to Yet you have chosen not to exercise any correct. So I have I have I chosen think it's a bit of a premature judgment for you to say that it's not working before you test drive it. I mean, well, I we know that concerns. it's not working because only two complaints have been registered, um, and yet there are over 700 obstructions listed, and there are only less than half of which are real serious obstructions. Um, but with the, also with the policy as it is, I'm not sure that it would be very effective because there's no definition of what can and cannot be permitted. All right, well, we're going to work on that. I'm aware. I'm we'll just see you on, yeah, We'll see you on the 8th. And uh, we need to move the meeting along, but okay. we'll keep working on it. And I will send you by email. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so we're back up to um, contracts. Change order number two to contract 107-13 for the forest stewardship plan. Are we finished voting on the first one? Yeah. We tabled it. We tabled it. Oh, right. Uh, so for the forest stewardship plan for Ryan West Waitley, the Ryan West Waitley and Mount Street Reservoirs to Michael Morey. Uh, this is a time extension on this contract. Until, we're going to extend it until September 11th of next year. Move approval. So as Sir said, this is a time extension only contract. There's about $16,000 left in the contract at this point. Um, I also wanted to make note that uh, Mike Mori will be here on the meeting on October 8th to discuss the red pine scale issue that we're having in our reservoir system. So just so you know, that's going to be on the calendar in the next board meeting. Um, all right, so for your consideration, we want to extend the contract because it's not complete or there's some the billing issues or? The work's not completed. Okay. Oops. Question, Gary? Uh, my, I know that we're not asking for any um, uh, increase in compensation, but uh, this, if we were, this would be paid for out of the uh, water enterprise fund? It is paid out of the water enterprise fund. And some of the cost of it was offset with a grant, support sewage ship grant right. from the state. Any other questions about this? All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. 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 Great, next, uh, another extension, one year extension of contract 29-13 for water meters and electronic transmitters to EJ Prescott. Move approval. Uh, second. This is part of our um, two year contracts, three year contracts we put out. This one is actually uh, one year with a one year extension. Uh, basically, we have about $17,000 left in encumbered funds for this contract to use up, so it's a time extension again. Questions? So um, in terms of water meters, electric, electronic transmitters, what percentage of the households uh, uh, in, the, in the city are, are we, is this, is this it, something that will complete a, a... No, we've been phasing this in over a number of years. So what is the percentage, I guess, it's, yeah, I'm just curious, that that's not important for any other reason? I just my don't curiosity. know how many are on, they, everyone's on a meter, mm -hmm. everyone's on a read or a time read, but these are the new re meters that you drive by and right, collect just, the data. Yeah, yeah. What happens is we have to, they break down too. Yeah. And so we have to not oh, only so put the like one. the new ones, it's also something like that. Yeah. Catch. Okay. For so new it's an buildings, and it's always it really ongoing. It's, it's an annual matter. contract. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
You have to keep replacing it. It's been going on for a while. Yeah. 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 No. Uh, all right. Um, a yes vote is in favor of extending this contract for one more year. All yes. in favor? All right. Aye. Great. Change order number one to contract 94 14 for the water treatment plant SCADA system to Aaron Associates. This is a time extension only. Second. So we have approximately $11,400 left on a contract with Aaron Associates. Uh, Aaron Associates is doing all the SCADA work at the wastewater treatment plant since it became operational in 2008. Okay. So, new guy question again, SCADA? Supervisory acquisition data Supervisory control. control. It, it's remote meters, so you can go to one room okay. and see everything that's happening in the plant. And, and also do it from the house or something too. We're going to set it up so it's fine on it. And with an iPhone. Nice. Yeah. 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 With the Apple. With the Apple. Yeah. Why is contract Watch. worth? Pardon me? What are these contracts worth that we're playing around? Uh, the original contract was $24,999. Okay. And of that 16 is left? $11,299 is remaining. And this is for maintenance? This is for anything that happens that needs reprogramming, issues that come up in the SCADA system. This is a company that fixes it. I think they charge Okay. All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. Change order number two to contract 17-15 for Eastern Avenue drainage improvements to JL Rainmakers and Sons in the amount of $5,500, and this is a stormwater project. Approval. Second. Uh, there are four items in this change order. It was work that was done in the field as things were found to be not quite what was on our plans. Change conditions predominantly is what it was. Uh, one of them, the first one was disconnecting a perforated drain pipe that I believe was a curtain drain from 45 Eastern Avenue. It was connected to the sewer line. It was removed from the sewer line and put into the drain line. That change order was $1,180 of this. The second item was remove and dispose of approximately 220 linear feet of then and four inch water main. Uh, that was in the way of the drain pipe that was not shown on the plans. There was no water main that's been abandoned for a number of years. Uh, that cost was $650 of that change order. The third item was a new connection of an existing 8 inch drain on William Street into one of the new manholes. And basically it was the water department, um, they had to, excuse me, the water department investigated the pipe, removing and banding one end of the inactive water main, installing 15 feet of 8 inch PVC pipe and fixtures from an existing 8 inch clay pipe and using brick and mortar to seal it. Uh, the work took approximately six hours outside of unit prices to uh, do the work. The cost was $1,878 on that. And the last part of the change order was excavating a 8x5 trench between two manholes, including uh, excavation around gas and water utilities, removing and disposing of abandoned drain line, and blocking the exposed ends of pipes. Um, once again, they were well over the unit prices to do the work. It was negotiated uh, by our staff to allow for some time and materials on this. That part was $1,821, so that's the total of $5,500 in the change order. Any questions? The, the connection, the uh, from 45 Eastern Ave, was that a private connection? We don't have a record of it. It was probably happened when the sewer line went in a number of years ago, mm -hmm. probably an old foundation drain or a curtain drain from the house. And it was going into the sewer line? It was going into the sewer line. So in cases where that exists, where it's a, where it's a pre existing condition, is it is it typically the city's responsibility to repair that line or is it the homeowner? Well this was in the city layout. Okay. So well, So it's only that area. So the area the area be, uh, be uh, the real property uh, outside the city layout. Was was there a problem with the pipe there as well, coming from the house? That I don't know. So how do we know if repairing this solves the problem? It's the pipe we came across and it was confirmed that it wasn't a sewer line from the house and that's mm -hmm. why they took it into the drain line. Mm 
Mm. They probably, I would imagine what they did, they die tested the toilets. Mm. To make sure so it wasn't it was, a problem, it was just the fact that the it came across and we found it. Uh, it's considered it wasn't visit. created as a, it wasn't it's a an issue, it was created to the as a structural system. problem. I saw. You may have avoided it. Right, you could have, yeah, it might have been a problem. In general, we would allow, if they were building new, we wouldn't allow them to tie into the storm drain. We would. We have a permit to allow you to tie oh, the foundation drains. We wouldn't allow them to tie a storm drain into, into the sewer line. line. Correct. But, correct. But we will let people tie into the storm drains. Yes, we do. But what if it already exists that it ties into the sewer line? If we come across it, we try to get it removed. There's a lot of buildings downtown tie into the storm drains, tie into the sewer line. <coughs> yeah. 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 What's the the original contract value? Um, $132,676. So it brings the total contract up to $139,555 because there was a previous change order for $2,100 or $2,500. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? Yeah. <coughs> All right. All in favor of approving this change order to the Eastern Ave project? Aye. Aye. Next, uh, for your consideration, change order number one, the contract 121-14 for the Mill oh, River Levy repairs to Northern Tree Service in the amount of $3,400. And again, this is a stormwater project. Move approval. Second. Why didn't you say stormwater borrowing? The original money for this work came from capital improvements from, I think, 2008 or 2009, which borrowed on the general fund for this work to be done. So we retain the city? Uh, retain the general fund? Not on this bond, I believe. But we're not going to borrow the money for this? No. The money's already been borrowed. It's that we're using the money up as part of this change order. The money was borrowed for the project originally, and the project was originally approved before the stormwater utility was established. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially a general fund project at this point. Okay. And, and um, River yep. Levy Repair, and what's the change order, Rob? Change order is for $3,400 to remove one very large <coughs> cottonwood tree that they came across that was deemed to be a hazard to the flood control system. So there's something that has changed the scope outside of the work that they found in the field and felt the need to take this particular tree down. Equal three four hundred dollar tree. Um, <coughs> the disposal was only $400 of it. The rest was labor and equipment. They had a 40-ton uh, truck-mounted crane out there, a crane operator. They had an Altec 75-foot lift truck, a bucket truck operator, ground one with a chainsaw, Kenworth with a log picker and an enclosed body. And How did it get missed the first time? Pardon me? How did it get missed when the contract was left? Um, it was a hazard found during it. I, I don't... I don't know. Hmm. That's a big tree to miss. Uh, it is. I think the, the whole project itself involved vegetation, um, it's basically a vegetation management project on the middle of the levee system. So the work covered thousands, of, thousands and thousands of feet of the levee system. Yeah. And um, I forget it, it this, this work happened quite a while ago. I don't actually remember how, how or why we missed it, but we made the decision to have Northern do it because there were access issues and there was a mis need for a train and they were the staged. You know, they were there. They had yeah. all the equipment. Yeah. And we, yeah. we wouldn't have the ability to do it. Yeah. yeah. But broadly speaking, they bid on this vegetation management, and then at some point they said, "Oh, look, there's a tree here." No, we, we said, oh, look, there's a tree here. Why you have all that equipment out here? Okay. If you could take that down for us, we would love it. That, that was a little bit more how it happened. The, the larger trees were flagged for removal on the plans. This big piece of the flag. It all resolves around who said, hey, look. Right. We don't want to deal with that one when it comes down. So. All right. Um, okay, well, um, all in favor of approving this change order to that contract? Aye. 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 Uh, next, a request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on Monday, October 13th, 2014, uh, between the hours of noon and 1 p.m. for the Polish Heritage Committee. And they'll be holding this year's annual Pulaski Day ceremonies honoring General Kazimierz Pulaski. Move approval. Second. 
Uh, we have police concurrence. We have Academy of Music concurrence. The fee's been waived by the mayor's office on this. It's one of the only events in the park that gets waived is this particular Heritage Day. Questions or comments? All in favor of approving their request to occupy Pulaski Park? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, next, we have set a date for a claims committee meeting for 48 Terrace Lane. Okay. Is this a hot issue or? Can no, we it's, it it's a water main break that happened um, earlier part of the year. Uh, the residents have an estimate to do the cleanup work in their garage. The sedimentation and silt from the water main break got into it. They don't have the money in advance to do the work. I uh, believe they're an elderly couple. So they filed a claim to ask for financial assistance to get an estimate in hand to get the work done. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do anything? Sure. We, so the claims committee handles yeah, water sewers. Three of you guys? Three of us. Yeah. Um, so we could meet. October right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 515? Sure. Oh. And then they can get going. Yeah, yep. well, that'd be good. Okay, great. Uh, all right, now uh, we had the hearing, and now we're going to discuss um, whether to recommend that the City Council accept Scandal Avenue. Move forward. Second. So you move <laughs> and we recommend acceptance. Yeah. So Scandal Avenue was one of the ones that was not accepted. <laughs> and and it wasn't even accepted when they changed the direction from one of way it. to two way yeah from two way to from one two way. way to one way or at least there's no record that it was ever it came to our attention of a, a, a person had bought the home on the corner of scanlon and florence road mm -hmm. and they came in here because they were concerned that they would be able to purchase the house because they had plans that showed the house being inside scanlon avenue that's not good. So, but it um, wasn't. <laughs> it, it, technically, it wasn't at the end of the day. But so we do have a <laughs> we have major sewer line that runs on Scanlon Avenue. We have water lines on, on Scanlon Avenue. Yeah. Um, it makes sense that we take this private way and make it a public way. Mm -hmm. so to make me thoroughfare. <laughs> yeah. well, right. Any questions or comments? All in favor of recommending that the City Council Except Scanlon Avenue is a designated city street. All right. Um, okay, let's see. Next, uh, a new topic um, contract for sodium hypochlorite to surpass chemical company in the amount not to exceed $13,920. And this will be a water enterprise project for we'll we'll purchase. Second. This is our disinfection at the end of the day for uh, basically chlorine injection. Uh, last year's price was almost 90 cents per gallon. This year it's 69.6 uh, .6 cents per gallon. Mm -hmm. So it went down in price. Any questions about that? Other bidders? No. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just looking. Three other bidders, or two other bidders, um, a high price being 82.9 cents per gallon. Is that, is that a sharp, a tip, typically fluctuate a lot in, uh, as a product? We've actually know? seen that the, most of the chemicals stay steady or go down in the past two years. Is there any benefit to buying more before it goes up again? Is it something that fluctuates? Well, we can only hold so much. We only have capacity. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. all, right. all in favor of approving the contract to purchase sodium hypochlorite? Aye. 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 Next, a contract for a polymer superflock. C572, the Aries chemical in the amount not to exceed 18720 And again, that will be bought for the water enterprise. This is the, uh, the coagulant we use to, uh, for the filtration system. It's the same price as last year's. It didn't change at all. We had no bids from two other companies. All in favor of approving the contract for Superflock? Aye. 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 Sure. Okay. Uh, next, a discussion of campaigning, leafleting, and solicitation at the transfer station. This came up as an issue this past year with uh, 
one of our councilors up here looking to gather signatures and the gatekeepers of trying to keep her out of the way of the traffic. Uh, we said that we would come back to you and give a rewrite of your existing policy. This is language that I changed on it to uh, be able to allow uh, the people who want to do campaign and leafletting set up a table somewhere near either one of the compactors or by the uh, gatekeeper's building to have a permanent place there to do this work without engaging in traffic again. Uh, when this was first proposed, we were kind of left out here in front of this building. Um, it never became an issue until this last incident that uh, we requested change. So here's a change in front of you. Walking through it, it basically deletes uh, the restricted areas for campaign and leafletting in front of the building, the Dolphin Engineering Building, and it allows for all activities to take place at uh, discretion of the gatekeepers building or gatekeepers. And I think there's additional answers that there will be no activity in areas designated for the vehicle drop off to ensure that they're not intermingling with the customers out there and getting potentially hurt or run over. The policing of this becomes the responsibility of whom? The gatekeeper. Is, is he up to that? Pardon me? Is he up to that? Because that's good. This has been so far. This is she. policy's been in place for a couple of years. Okay. He or she. Okay. So there's no complaints coming back from the gatekeeper about people objecting to that? There were complaints about people running between the cars trying to get signatures. Yeah. 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 yeah I can see that. But wasn't the counselor asked to relocate? She was. And she. Actually, I think gave up that day from campaigning. She win? Pardon? Did she win? I don't know. <laughs> I know who she was campaigning for personally. But but <clears throat> I'm I'm just I confess I haven't read it carefully, but um, I think she faulted the process for being asked to move, and it sounds like you're suggesting that it should be at the discretion of the gatekeeper, and I think that was her point. It wasn't, she was doing an activity that wasn't allowed there, and the gatekeeper told her to stop it. Because of she didn't even know we had a policy. Okay. All right, so we're good. Well, well we so the, the way it stands now, any activity, whether it be campaigning, leafletting, or solicitation, or solicitation can take place Seven near the center of the action near the gatekeeper's shack in a spot that they deem appropriate and not to interfere with all the traffic up there. So if that's okay, I had some wordsmithing because I did I played with the words a little bit, but um, I thought the concept was fine and consistent with what we talked about when this came up the last time, that it was a little too onerous to require campaigning to take place out here, which is where we came down the last time originally. Okay. And uh, so this will be posted. Will this, will this, um, once approved, be posted in a place where it can be referenced by the gatekeeper rather than saying, "Oh, there's a policy right there." It will be, it will be given to the gatekeepers. It's also put on our DPW website under our permit section. Uh, we have people come in on a regular basis, take out these permits to yeah. basically solicit there. Okay, so that's what I'll be made aware. Of. So they'll still be required to get a permit to be doing that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's a free permit. It's not fee driven. Just that sometimes we have so many groups that want to do it, we have to coordinate. We only allow two activities at any time here. So, to, are we looking for, we're not at the final approval state today? Uh, Mike has some wordsmithing he wants to do to it. That's point. fine. I, well, I can either read it or give it to Ned and we can bring it back to the next meeting. Why don't I just get that my suggested comments? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll get this back out to you. Okay. Okay. Right. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, old business, uh, the reuse center comes up next. Doing a great job out there. I went out there today to check up on the process. Uh, one of the front walls is almost framed in now and painted. Um, it's looking great. A great group of volunteers trying to get things done. It's a little slower, I think, than they thought it would be, but they're making progress. 
And central services has been supportive. They have been. They were out there framing that front wall, yeah. setting up the firewood on it. So, <laughs> who's that, Jonesy? Yeah, Jonesy, exactly. <laughs> and they're looking for uh, models. They're uh, planning to have a fashion show using recycled clothing. Mm -hmm. It's one of the fall events. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for models, if any. <laughs> I hadn't heard that either. You're really <laughs> up on um, So that was the update. Uh, uh, obstructed people. sidewalk. We'll revisit that at the next meeting. The approval process uh, for permits on Pulaski Park. Basically, this has brought up the fact that anytime mm -hmm. Pulaski Park wants to be used, you have to come to the board for a permit. Yep. Mm -hmm. I believe the concept was was have the director sign off the permit without going to the board. Unless was, there was an issue like that, mm -hmm. when we have an issue with fine arts, right? You know, then we bring it to you. Okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, any comments on that or questions about the way that would work? I think, yeah, I don't see why we need to sign off on it. I mean, if you have all the stuff in place, the concerns from the police department, the academy of music, and, and you the don't bill, sign them anyway. Or, or, yeah. or the uh, mayor waives the fee. It just seems like somebody wants a permit. Yep. They got the stuff, they need to issue it. So I, I'm fine with that. So do you think we need a vote in the record? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, I like to hear about the things that have happened. It is kind I of do nice. Too. I do but I don't want people have to come in and sit through our meetings so that they can make a presentation. So I it just feels a little yeah. So would someone like to make a motion that we authorize the staff to make these decisions in all of the routine cases? So moved. Like that? I'll second that. Joe first did it. I'll second that. I can always send you a copy of the permit, of the request, if you want to read about it. <coughs> I'll keep my finger on the pulse of the community. All right. More added responsibility for city staff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. No additional compensation. <laughs> no <Another laughs> unfunded <laughs> mandate. <laughs> All right, so I think we're all set. The motion is to uh, ask the staff to handle approval of a routine request to occupy Pulaski Park. If they have discretion, they might bring a case or two to us occasionally for our wisdom. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. For our wisdom, is that part of the motion? <laughs> yes, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a side explanation. That's, a side. That's right. Uh, next is the crosswalk policy, I think. I may have lost track of the um, where we're at, but Catherine Osborne, mm -hmm. Kathy Osborne, yes. uh, called me and formally withdrew her request. In the paper? Yeah. In the paper, you not intending to have any discussions in the near future. Right, we have a lot on our plate. Um, <laughs> we may not get to that immediately. Um, it's problematic every way you look at it. I, 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 I mean, if someone wants to run with that ball and kind of work on something, I, I, it's fine with me. But. So you're suggesting that we'll wait until the next time somebody asks you know, the opportunity. Well, we, there's a moratorium in place, an indefinite moratorium on any, we're not um, entertaining requests at this time. Right. Uh, the state uh, highway department contacted Ned. They have some. They have some thoughts about the color of the uh, rainbow crosswalk. They think it might need a little more work to more clearly delineate that. They're suggesting transverse lines going from curve to curve on either side of it. Is that correct? That's correct. Oh. Um, we, we never talked about uh, what happens when the paint fades. We typically repaint crosswalks every six months or so. Yeah. What happens? Uh, it's just a whole can of issues that we never really got into. I thought we talked about um, that there was that, that there was an, there was ongoing fund to repaint if necessary. Did I imagine that? Um, I thought we were going to make the responsibility of the, the mm -hmm. people who um, 
bring the request forward to, to buy the paint. I think we agreed right. that we would. But that they had a fund, so it was their fund. Right. So the way I look at it, if they don't, we, if they don't come up with the funds for the following year. We just simply do what we uh, remember doing. That's to paint the white. Those are the lines that right. we care about, and the stuff can just mm -hmm. fade. And the, the white is not quite standard, is it? Yeah, it is. I think we need to. Mm -hmm. not right. What's not standard about the white? Well, it is the standard, white or yellow? No, the latter. The, la the latter. Oh, the latter. You talk okay, I thought you were talking about the color. The, the spacing of the latter is irregular. Well, that's yeah. true. We went wider. Um, that's right. Yeah. And is that what the state objected to? No, I the state wanted to see the transverse lines because that's the other means of demarcation of a crosswalk. Use the white transverse lines uh, eight, 8 to 10 feet apart minimum. But that's not, I mean, there is another standard. Is, this, is it the federal highway standard that we adopted? Yeah, the which is the latter. Yeah. No? Right. I think there's sort of a bigger issue here, and that is, does the community want this? And if if it's proposed, is it acceptable to the community? And, and we were headed toward not making that decision within this group, but in, involving others in the city. And I, or, or at one point there was a suggestion um, in the joint city council BPW meeting to terminate the practice because it, it's very difficult to administer it equitably amongst all the groups that might have an interest. Um, so, so you I think, think we should I, conclude it one way or the other? I think we need to move it along so that, that because I, I think we can probably, I don't know what the end result will be, but I think we ought to move it along and and at least involve the joint committee um, to see where this ought to go. Yeah. yeah, I'd be a little concerned if we got too um, bogged down with trying to come up with something that works here, given the fact that the city is, is going to find very well if this bid uh, trial goes the wrong way, uh, the bid could very well implode which would then just bring all this continued attention back to the, to the, to the department um, with respect to what isn't being done downtown compared to what was being done downtown. And this would look to be something as though it's under those, under, if that are the circumstances that we find ourselves in, this would, would give the appearance of being something that we probably should not be spending time with when the streets are dirty or not, or not being cared for in a way that could cause nothing but grief for these guys. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a sad situation. Sad day for them if that happens. But I, I can see the whole, you know, this whole thing being churned up again. Uh, you know, the BPW doesn't do this and doesn't do that because of the budget, of course. But mm -hmm. the, you know, that's why the bid, you know, was developed in the first. I think we we gotta, we gotta be a little sensitive to what might happen there because I think it's gonna change. Yeah, you know, change the dynamics now. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. We just gotta kinda keep our eye on that. And this this whole issue seems like something that the bid would be a logical entity yeah. to yeah. pass it off to sure. say, think about this because it is part of the business, you know, it largely happens right. in the downtown area. Yeah. 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 And they're hamstrung financially by their by virtue of the fact that they gotta fight the fight here. So it's a it's a it's a tough thing, you know. And uh, these are all important issues to some people. But you know, when you come in the whole scheme of things, there's, it's going to be uh, a larger question for the overall downtown with respect to what they've suddenly become accustomed to in the last four or five years. Virtually, with with with, uh, uh, with a great with a strong likelihood that that would not be possible under uh, circumstances that could very well exist here. Uh, just to keep an eye on it, I guess. But we're in a position right now that we've said that there's a moratorium. There's no more consideration of it until there's design until there's guidelines that are developed and there's no entity that's sort of moving forward contemplating that question. So we in effect have an ongoing moratorium, yes? Yes, it's indefinite. Right. But if it was at the I don't know if you were at the joint committee meeting that we left it there last, we should circle around. Circle around, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and they just have some closure on it. 
So Bill, that, Bill Newman that, has a great idea. Excuse me, Bill. Bill Newman had a great idea, which I keep thinking might be the best solution. I don't know if it's if the colors are available, but you know those temper the temporary tape they put down when they're in the middle of paving operations. They need yeah. to just put down a, a dash line. Um, you think tape is available in colors? He said, why don't we just say if you want to pay for the tape, you can put down tape for a week or a day. Is that? Is that? Any? I have no idea. Why don't we sell a crosswalk? You put a little sign up like those that you see on the highway. This crosswalk is all required. Sponsored by. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Sorry, I don't know answer. Anyway, all right. So we'll take it to the joint committee and okay. and see what the counselors think uh, would be the best course of action. Do we all sit in the joint committee? Yeah. Well, yeah. No, just three 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 three. Okay. Yeah. So MJ, Mike, and, Mike and myself sit in the joint committee. Here, that's all. Okay. I asked Ned to give us an update on pavement operations for the season. We're getting we're nearing the end of the season and we're all eager to hear. So um, the only roadway actually excuse me, the only roadway that was scheduled for a large reclamation or mill and overlay project uh, that hasn't been touched yet is Bridge Road. Uh, between Francis Street and Jackson Street. Uh, Rich started uh, box paving activities on Coles Meadow prepping it this week. We're scheduled to go up tomorrow, weather permitting, uh, to start doing that work. Uh, they had to do some prep work when they were sweeping the streets on Coles Meadow to start the work. The sweeper actually tore up the edges of the road, so the crew had to go out and advance and put new pavement down on, up on those edges that broke away and get it set up for the overlay. Sylvester Road, the reclaimer is coming in after October 1st to do that roadway. Uh, the lane contract goes into next springtime, and lane's concerned they won't get all the work done, particularly Bridge Road this year. We're trying to convince them to do it since they have the reclaimer in town. Uh, it's a specialty piece of equipment that they don't own, they contract that service out. But as those have been up in downtown Florence, and uh, the roads are beautiful, Prospect Street is beautiful, defined with bike lanes or share roads. Uh, it was a great, great project by the DPW this year. So box paving is the open end thing that's still being done. I believe that there were six streets that Richie and the uh, DPW crew were trying to get to this year. Uh, they're still going to make every attempt to. If not, they'll be done next year. And does it, I think Coles Meadow Road is about 50% of the footage we had hoped to work on? I don't know about the footage offhand, but I don't know. It's a little over two miles of uh, box paving schedule. Uh, and, and I'm wondering about the feasibility of taking a careful look at all of those streets. And like, is part of Pomeroy Terrace perhaps important enough to leave off part of Coles Meadow mm -hmm. Road? Is that being looked at strategically? Uh, I or is it simply, well, they're up there, we might as well finish that. All the resources right now are up on, on four, four Coles Meadow Road. Um, I can talk to Richie about that and see if we look at prioritizing segments of the roadways to be done. That way we get the, the worst ones done first. They're all in bad shape. That's how we're doing the work. We may have to do that. I mean, based on the fact, I'm sorry, based yeah. on the fact that, um, you know, we're running out of, the construction season's yeah. going to be ending. It seems doubtful that we may get them all done this year, but in terms of the amount of work that can be done in the window that we have, it might make sense to go to one street just in terms of the length of what needs to be done to, to patch up that street before we do yeah. another one. So I anticipate once Coles Meadows done and he's doing online to, was that the second one? Uh, I forget which one is. I but but that, sort of, that sort of thing will be decided um, in-house just based on the amount of time that we have. But and, and so the lane contract uh, goes to next spring. The, the cost of the reclaimer, come being restaged, if you will, whatever the word might be, is theirs. It is. Okay. So if they don't get it done, and they've got the equipment here now, then you know the, it's up to them to come back and right. Right. the mark. That's fine. That's that's important. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the big push with the reclaimer is getting Sylvester Road done. Last year, this past spring, we spent, I believe, three weeks out on Sylvester Road with a crew patching potholes. And I, and I told uh, David Leather to explain the lane that I don't want to do that again next spring. This is your responsibility to get the road done. 
they had the option. I mean, the, con the contractor was good because the, they had the option to delay Celeste Road if they wanted to because we had extended the contract into next year because it's like a $2 million contract and it's a lot of work. So the contractor has been very, the work's been great that we get to work with. So we're fortunate. The roadways are great. Roger, do you have a? I just want to know what the pulverizer is. It actually pulverizes the. <clears throat> you said to whatever depth you want, we typically do eight inches. It pulverizes the asphalt and the roadbed materials all at once. Oh, cool. You get that scarred mm -hmm. surface. Mm -hmm. um, this is, mm -hmm. That's cold plate. Yeah, oh, this cold is, plate. You're taking up the whole road. So oh, so right. that's for totally reclaimed. Right. Okay. Versus up in Florence, where it's cold planing or milling, they call it, mm -hmm. where we took down two inches and put two inches back in. So just for reference, um, my own had uh, two million dollar <coughs> spent this year. Includes is that all city roads, or is that includes the state contract for the for Route Nine? Two million dollar figure. I'm just wondering if is the two million dollar figure that you just mentioned is that strictly the the, the other city roads? City roads. Okay. The work that was done north on, or not north, but westbound on Route 9 past right. Clementines. Right. That was a state mass DOT project, not with city dollars or our Chapter 90 funds. Okay, but how about coming back into Florence? That was all Chapter 90 funds, and city put in a half million dollars in capital improvements this year. Okay. <coughs> so that $2 million for this year, which I think everybody is happy to see what, what has uh, uh, been improved upon throughout the city. Is that how's that compare with previous years? Just out of curiosity, is it? Is it? Because it certainly looks like it's more. I mean, as you drive around, you see all the work being done. You say, okay, you know. On average, probably for the past four or five years, we've probably been spending on the average about six hundred thousand dollars a year in street resurfacing projects. Um, a couple of years ago it was Con Street. Right. Last year it was Kennedy Road. That was a six hundred thousand dollar project. Um, before that. Uh, Prospect Avenue and yeah. West Farms we've done that year. Right. But the but the two million dollars mm -hmm. is is chapter ninety as well as five hundred thousand dollars from capital improvements. That's correct. And so, what's unique about this year is that if you go back as far as nineteen ninety, right. the only other year the city put in any money from the general fund was in two thousand seven. Fifty thousand dollars of city money right. went into roadways. That's it. It's zero, 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 other than that one year, going all the way back to 1990, and we stopped looking. Well, I think, just in the subject for a different day, but I think that there's there's a point where we should look at the, the roads in general in the city as an important enough asset to bond for, 